Hello, Math 6. This is DJ Tay and Spin Master Trasta. We are getting ready to give you the answers for the study guide for tomorrow's Unit 6 test. All right, so you should have your code sheet. All right, so let's look at the first page. It's asking, it says, label each graph by its shape or skew. So this first one, we're looking at the peak there. That's how we start to see the skew. And we see that on both sides of the peak, the information, the data there is basically even. So this one has symmetry. All right, and so the next one, this one, here's the peak. Remember, we identify the peak, and I see that the tail is going to the right. So this is skewed right. And over here, I see that the peak is here, and the tail, all the data, or most of the data is going this way. So this is skewed to the left. All right, so let's look at the next one. Team Shannon played in a kickball tournament. Here's the number of runs scored for the month of February. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plot this data. It wants me to plot it, and then we can do the fun stuff of getting the mode and the information for the mean. All right, so we have two, so I'm going to plot two. We have five, three, Six, another three, seven, five, four, three, another seven, a nine, five, another three, one, another one, and an eight. All right, so I have my dot plot done. And I want to make sure you count them, too. Make sure you have all your data there. I had kids making mistakes. Oh, yeah. Not counting up their data. All right, so let's see. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that means I should have 16 dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Awesome. Thank you. That means we got all of the data um, on our dot plot. All right, so now it asks us what is the mode? Well, for a dot plot, we can look at what's the peak and it tells us the mode. So three is the highest on our graph. So our mode is three. And then it says, what is the mean? So that means that we have to add up all of these numbers. And I'm just gonna, I just pop them into a calculator and I see that all of these numbers equal 72. And now I had 16. We already established that, right? So now it's 72 divided by 16, and that gives us 4.5. All right, so our mean is 4.5. Okay, so now the next one, a survey was taken on the number of people in each household. Based on the frequency, create a histogram to represent the data. All right, so sometimes the question is where to start. What I like to do is I like to look at the data and I like to see where does it begin? What is the minimum? Well, the minimum is one. And where is my maximum? My maximum is nine. So what I'm going, that information tells me, like, where can I start and end my intervals? Because remember, histograms give you intervals. So I'm going to start my interval at one. And if I'm going to nine, that means I can do maybe, let's see, one to three. And then I can do four to six. Remember your intervals have to be even, seven to nine. So now that I've set up my intervals, I'm going to look at my data and count how many, I could do a little tally, how many falls, the frequency falls of each one. So for one to three, I have one, two, three, four that fit in that category. Four to six, one, two, three, four, that fits in that category. Seven to nine, 
one, two, three, four that fits in that one. So this is going to be a pretty easy histogram because it says to make sure you label it. So down over this side, we're doing frequency. So we can say one, two, three, four. And this is going to be my frequency. Don't forget those labels. Mm -hmm. And then down here, I'm going to have, as we see, we have three intervals, so three bars. All right. So I'm going to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was always telling my kids, I got to be touching. Yep. All right. So I have my one to three interval. I'm going to have my four to six interval. And I'm going to have my seven to nine interval. All right. So my one to three, I see that it has a frequency of four. All right. So I'm just going to do a quick bar right up to four. My four to six. The easy thing about this is that, <laughs> hey, it's all four. Now, that may not happen often, so make sure you're looking at your data. All right, and then my seven and nine is also four. Okay, so I have a histogram with all of my data represented, but I still am going to make sure I have down here number of people. Make sure I have a label. Okay, so the next question it is kind of like a jump off of this one. It says, which type of graph displays data arranged into intervals? And we just finished doing that. It's a histogram. All right, kiddo. So it is time for your first code. Woo! Yes. All right. So make sure you get out your code sheet. And the code number one is the first letter of your last name. First letter of your last name. So go ahead and take a good look at these. I'm not going to read them out this time. Take a good look. Pause it if you need to. Yeah. All right. So Mrs. Traster, Spin Master Traster, what is your, what is your code number one? A headband. Oh, awesome. And my code number one, first letter of my last name is Pew. So P, I have a scarf. Cool, pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, All awesome right. guys. So now let's look back at our study guide, but we're gonna turn to page, our second page. Okay, so it says the weight of six basketball players is listed in pounds, all right? And it wants me to describe the mean of the data. So that means that I need to first do the math for it. So I'm going to put all of these into the calculator. All right. So once I put these into the calculator, I have over 950. So I now have to divide it by how much? Well, it tells me six basketball players. And I could just simply count that it sits numbers there. So I get a total of 100, a mean of 159.17 if I'm rounding it to two decimal places. So that's 159.17 pounds. But I have to describe the mean. So I see that I can I need to put that in a complete sentence. So the mean weight of the six basketball players, excuse my handwriting guys. We had some technical difficulties. Yeah. We had to do it old school. Today. It is 159.17 pounds. Okay. Anything you would like to add to that, Mrs. Uh, Spin Master Trasta? No, I just love how you restated it. You mm. used the question in mm -hmm. your answer so that you didn't have to worry about spelling anything. You didn't have to worry about thinking about any mm. terms. You had it all right there for yourself. Awesome, awesome. Great tip there, guys. All right, so number five, is this a statistical question? Why or why not? So it says, what are the shoe sizes of the students in sixth grade? All right. 
I say that yes, this is a statistical question. A statistical question. And the question asks us why or why not. All right. So, yes, this is a statistical question. And our why is there is an opportunity or a possibility for a variety of answers or responses. Because remember our statistical questions, we have to make sure there is a variety, um, an opportunity to have a broad range of answers. Now a bunch of people may have the same answer, the same shoe size, but there is a chance for them not to. All right, so let's look at number six. Create a box and whiskers plot from the following data. All right, so in the number of sixth grade students that do their homework every night. Okay, so I am going to, in order to do a box and whiskers plot, I'm going to have to do a five number summary. So I'm going to, just to make it easier for myself, I'm going to write that I need my minimum, my maximum, my Q1, my Q2, and lastly, my Q3. So looking at this data real quick, I see that my minimum is five, my maximum is 20, and now I have to do the first real step to do this. I have to put these in numerical order. If I don't, I won't find out what's in the middle for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in order. Always step number one for finding your median. Yes. Put them in order, least to greatest. All right. So they're in least to greatest order now, and I am going to find my Q2, which is my median. So remember, guys, um, some of you saw me show you how to do the little finger method. This method works for me um, so that I can still see my data later. So I'm going to, my way of crossing them out, right? And then move over one each time. And I'm left with 11. So my Q2 is 11. So now that I found that median, I have to look at the first half of my data now. And my median is seven. And now I look at my second half of data and my median is 13. All right, so Q1 is seven, Q3 is 13. So now I'm just gonna plot those points really quickly. So I have five, and remember that's in between four and six. Then I have, let's go ahead and do our maximum of 20. Then I have to do seven. And that's a quartile, so the quartile gets a line. My next quartile is 11. And my third quartile is 13. So now I can just attach my box. And now my whiskers. And boom, that one's complete. All right, so now the last one. The number of children each teacher has is listed. What is the mean number of children per teacher? All right, so that means I need to add all of these together. Here's the tricky thing about this, guys. Sometimes people say, well, do the zeros count? Yes, yes, the zeros count, guys. So when I, you know, mm -hmm. I, tell, I always tell them to think about test grades. You might not Ooh, want the zero to count, but, but it you counts. got it. Yeah, so it counts. It's got to be added in there. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. So when I add these all up together, it gives me 27. All right. So these added together give me 27. And I have 10 numbers. So now I need to do 27 divided by 10, and I get 2.7. Now, you guys will see this when you're older. They'll say, yeah, 3.5 children per household. You're saying, how do you get a half a child? Well, <laughs> this is just for data purposes. It is no 0.7 of a child running around anywhere. 
All right, so it is time for code number two. Woohoo! All right, so code number two is the last letter of your first name. Last letter of your first name. So go ahead and take a really good look at that. Pause if you need to. All right, so what's yours, Spin Master Traster? Mine is tie-dye. Yeah, and I'm Tay, so mine is also tie-dye. Awesome. All right, guys. Okay, so now it's time for, I want you to turn to page three of the study guide. I'm going to swap out. Thank you. All right. So, Spin Master Trassa collected data on the weight of her students, and she found that the range of the data she collected was 24. The range was 24. What does the range of 24 mean? This was asking you to give basically a definition for range. Is, is what they're doing in the context of this question. So I'm going to restate my question and I'm going to say the mean weight. Oh no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I apologize. I was looking at the wrong question, guys. And I'm going to erase that. So that was a good thing that I have my erasable pen today. All right. So if I'm explaining what the range is, I am going from. The lowest weight to the highest weight there is a difference of 24 pounds. Because when we're talking about range, we've said it over and over again, range equals your maximum minus your minimum. So it's talking about the distance between those two. All right, question 10. It says a data set has a minimum of four, a maximum of 16, a lower quartile of seven, a median of nine, and an upper quartile of 12. What is the interquartile range of this data set? Well, that's all the information Ms. Tage has found for our five number summary for a box and whisker plot. They're not asking me to make a box and whisker plot. They only want our interquartile range. This was our, um, we have numbers of centers, we have numbers of variation, this is our numbers of variation. So we're finding our interquartile range. We are going to use our quartiles so that we can find that. Now, if range was maximum minus minimum, we're still looking at that here, but we're going to use our upper quartile, or our Q3, minus our lower quartile, which is our quartile 1. That's how we're going to find our interquartile range. So I am taking 12 minus 7, and that's going to give me an interquartile range of 5. Still doing range, maximum minus minimum, but now we're just looking at the quartile numbers. Question 11. We've got Clapback Clark, who is asking people how many push-ups they can do, and the results are shown on the dot plot. What is the mean of this set of data? mean we're looking for our average so when I'm looking at this information the first thing that I want to make sure that I'm doing um, is adding up all of my information and people make the common mistake they'll say one one four two no every dot represents the number below it so here I have 30 plus 31 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32 I'm adding every single one And then I have two 33s, oops, plus 34, plus 35, plus 35, plus 35, plus 35, plus 35. I have to add all of those numbers up. Now, some of you have gone to the shortcut, and I, I think it's great, of figuring out each row. So you'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 35, and you'll write your answer up top. Um, or here we have 233, so we would put 66 up top, and then you add across the top. That's fine. Whichever strategy works best for you. After you have added all of those up, you're going to divide them by the number of data. 
we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 pieces of data, and when you divide your total by 14, you end up with 33.14. So the mean for this set of data equals 33.14. All right, question 12, a little bit tricky. Um, Miss Tay and I were talking about it as well. Remember, median. Think about those box and whisker plots. When we found the median, we were finding the middle with that median. So that's the same thing that we're doing here. We're finding the middle of the data. We want to have the same thing on both sides. Now, we know with a histogram that histograms don't, they're not very good for finding the mean or median because we don't have the exact values. Right, we've got those ranges. Yeah, but we can look at our distribution, how that data is spread out to get an idea of where the median or the mean would be. Right, so this is our spread of the data and we want to make sure basically that you have the same number of bars on both sides once you've found it. So here, when we're looking at this set of data, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six bars. We want to show that the middle of that, well, you can see that pretty well there. Um, so the middle of that data happens right here at that 75. Well, now it's asking you which interval does that median fall? Well, let's talk about those intervals because we have to make sure we identify them. So if this starts at 60, where does it end? 64, because this one starts at 65, so 65 to 69, 70 to 74, this interval will be 75 to 79, 80 to 84, 85 to 89, and then 90 to 94, which looks well, I guess I can just stop that one there. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're looking for where this falls, this falls between 75 and 79. So the median um, interval would be 75 to 79. Interval. 75 to 79. All right. And we are ready for code number three. Code number three. Here it comes. Whoop, whoop. It is my groovy math outfit, code number three, month of your birthday. So we are looking for our birthdays, and I am born in May, coming up, so I would be leopard print. Miss Tay, what month? I am born in February, so mine would be ruffles. Ooh, ruffles. And not the chips, guys. I think I put some ruffles right now. That, that sounds okay. delicious. Okay. All right, guys. So check your date. Make sure that you have your month in there and what item you have to add for our codes. We've got one more code coming up to you. And here comes our last page. All right. So for the last page, we are looking at analyzing our um, box and whisker plot. It says the scores for the sixth grade math test are displayed in this box plot. What percent of the students scored at least an 85 on their test? Now, you know I like to write all over my box plots. I do. So, I go through and I write minimum, maximum, and I kind of try to figure out where everything is, right? And then I have my median or Q2. I've got my Q1, my lower quartile. I've got my Q3, my upper quartile. And then what else do I like to do? I love to put my percents because if everything is there for me, I am less likely to make a mistake. All right, so now it's asking, the scores for the sixth grade math test are displayed in this box plot. What percent of the students scored at least, at least an 85? This takes us back to inequalities from our old unit. So if it's at least 85, 84 is not going to cut it. I need to be 85 or higher. So I'm going this way. So which percentages am I capturing? I've got 50% of students who scored at least an 85%. And my, my kids, remember we talked about the Hershey's candy bar and our Q2 cuts that candy bar right in half. And mm -hmm. notice that our 85 is at Q2. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have half of the bar that's left. Again, you're making me hungry. I'm just saying. Yeah. All right. My Number lot. 14. We have Big Time Basket. I love it. Big Time Basket earned $48, 26, 50, 22, and uh, 43, and 35 for tutoring McEachern students. 
What is the median amount of money she earned? Step one, you've got to order them least to greatest. So let's go ahead and get our numbers down where they belong. We have 22, 26, 35, 43, 48, 50. I am not going anywhere else until I have counted to make sure that I have the right number because everything else will be wrong after that point. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know it's an even amount, so I'm going to end up with two numbers in the middle that I need to work with. So you can do the fingers or my guys, you were doing this. All right, we've got two numbers in the middle, so I'm taking the 35 plus the 43. I have to add them together, which will give you 78. And then you're dividing that by two, which gets you to 39. So 39 is my median. And from there, I'm going to use the other sides of the numbers to find my least, my lower quartile and my upper quartile. So if 39 breaks it in half, I'm using all of these numbers to find my lower quartile. I'm gonna use all of these numbers to find my upper quartile. I'm just doing the median. Boom, here's my lower quartile. And then same thing on this side, get into the middle, and here is my upper quartile. So um, what is the median amount? Oh, I went further than I needed to. <laughs> and you just, hey, you just let me keep going. All right, I mean, so our median. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. You know, I get going. Math usually has so many problems. I got to keep going. Yes. All right, so our median amount is $39. But you got a little refresher on lower and upper quartiles. Mm -hmm. There we go. Number 15, give an example of a question that is not a statistical question. I got it. What is Mr. Shannon's favorite color? Hmm, that's a really good there question. You go. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that one. minds would like to know, Mr. Shannon. Yep. All right, so that's your other challenge. Now, why isn't that a statistical question, Mrs. Uh, Spin Master Traster? Well, if I know Mr. Shannon, he is going to be concise. Mm -hmm. And he is going to give me one answer. Mm -hmm. And if it is one answer, I do not have any statistical variability. Yeah. I need to have multiple answers in order to have that. Yep. Variety right. of answers, Variety guys. Variety is the key. So our last code, here it comes. You have made it to the end. Woo, 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 woo. All right. So our last code is... Math teacher and class period. Every time. We always finish with this one. So if you are with DJ Tay, first period, second period, third, fourth, and fifth, make sure you're picking your right code. If you are Spin Master Traster, whoop, whoop. here you go. You've got your codes, 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 codes. And then on your sheet, you have one other job that you have to complete. Oh, which one? Sorry. We have one other job that we have to complete. Oh, here it is. I got gotcha. you. Sorry. And which, oh, Miss Tay, who are you giving a shout out today? Oh, class, you know what? Period? That's really cool. Let's see. Um, we did first period last time. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to give a shout out to my third period because they, they were rocking today. You know what's so funny? I already did mine and I did third period too. Yeah. Woo. All right. So we've got the jumpsuit. Yeah. And you chose uh, third period as well. I so did. yours is I'm uh get you mine here in just yeah. a second. Grab mine. All right, so Miss Tay or DJ Tay. Yeah. Will you read off your little story? Yeah, so I have my code one is scarf, code two is tie-dye. Code three is my ruffles. And my coat four was a jumpsuit. All right, so my groovy math outfit, I am wearing a scarf with tie-dye ruffles and a jumpsuit. Woo! All right, and remember, guys, you had to do a t-shirt design and the t-shirt design i chose you guys will become very familiar with it in our next unit um about absolute value with absolute value any negative number in it is always positive so my shirt says stay positive guys
All right, and here's my shirt. So I have, Woo! I am a headband, or I am wearing, I'm not a headband. <laughs> I am wearing a headband with tie-dye leopard print and platform boots. Woo! That would have been great for Wacky Wednesday. Yeah, it would have. And what does your shirt say, my lady? Well, you know, I had to give a nod to the Miami Dolphins. Woo so I have my teal and orange proudly displayed, and I said, dear math, I love you to infinity. And beyond. And beyond. Yes. All right, guys. Good luck on your test tomorrow. We're um we're excited to see you guys bright and early. You'll be ready. Bye.